So that we can see what we're doing, it's easier to start with simple number equations rather than to get straight in with the algebra. 5 plus 3 equals 6 plus 2, both of course equal 8. We can add 2 to both sides. So 5 plus 3 plus 2 equals 6 plus 2 plus 2, which is, of course, 10 on each side. If we subtract 4 from each side, then the equation is still true. The both sides add up to 6. The equation is still true. They both one side equals the other. Let's change now to an algebraic equation, one I've just made up. So x plus y equals 2x minus y plus 4. To try and get the y's on one side, I'm going to add a y to each side. So we've got x plus y plus y, and on the other side, 2x minus y plus y. The minus y and the plus y will cancel out. So we've got x plus 2y equals 2x plus 4. We now have a lone x on the left-hand side. By subtracting x from each side, we will, on the left-hand side, have x minus x, which cancels out the x's. And then 2y remains by itself. On the right-hand side, we've got 2x minus x, which is going to be x. So we're ending up with a much simplified equation, 2y equals x plus 4. The simple rule is always, whatever you do on one side of the equation, you do on the other. And that applies to multiply and divide equations, starting with an example of a simple number equation. 10 obviously equals 5 times 2. If we divide both sides by 2, then we have 10 divided by 2 equals 5. The 2's cancel out on the right-hand side. Applying that to a commonly used physics equation, force equals mass times acceleration. If we want acceleration by itself, we can divide both sides by mass. So the mass on the right-hand side cancels out, leaving us with force over mass equals acceleration. Similarly, if we want the term mass by itself, we can divide both sides by a, by the acceleration. So the a's cancel out on the right-hand side. Mass equals force divided by acceleration. Many of the equations we use combine both addition, subtraction and multiplication division. A well-known equation, v equals u plus at, one of the equations of motion. If we want to isolate the term at, we can take away u, we can subtract u from each side. So we've got v minus u equals at. But then supposing we want the t by itself, well, we have to then divide both sides of the equation by a. So we've got a cancelling out on the right-hand side, leaving us with t equals v minus u over a. Finally, looking at a slightly more complicated equation. Again, one of the equations of motion, s equals ut plus a half at squared. Let's set about making u the subject of the equation. Well, we can move the half at squared across by subtracting a half at squared from both sides. They'll cancel out on the right. So we're left with s equals a half at squared equals ut. Now, we want u as the subject. So we have to divide both sides by t to get rid of it on the right-hand side. So we've got s minus a half at squared divided by t. Dividing both sides by t, it cancels out on the right. Simplifying a little on the left by separating the terms, we have s divided by t minus a half at, because one of the t's cancels out. That equals u. Thank you for watching.